hi everyone and uh, welcome to this particular video which goes through sort of how we identify a forecasting model and there are many ways by which we can identify a forecasting model particularly uh, the simplest of which is identification through visual inspection while of course it's the simplest it's not necessarily the most guaranteed way to identify a model so consider these two uh, figures that we have here the figure on the left and the figure on the right and we discussed in the past module what the moving average process is and what the autoregressive process is. And what if I ask you the question, which one is an AR1 and which one is an MA1? And I think just by looking at the, the graph itself, you'd be hard pressed to sort of tell which one is which. I mean, you would be guessing if, I mean, at least I would be guessing at this scenario. So, there must be some way by which we can distinguish an AR, an autoregressive process, from an MA. And the way we can do that is by looking into the partial autocorrelation function and the autocorrelation function. So how do we do that? If you look at the figure on the left, that would be the AR model, and the figure on the right would be the MA model. So we have an AR1 where the model intercept is basically one, and the auto... Uh, the coefficient is 0.7, so we have this model being specified as yt is 1, that's the mu, and then you have uh, phi 1 being equal to 0.7. And then on the right, we have an MA model with a mu of 4 and an intercept similarly of 0.7. So obviously, mu is where it starts, so it starts at 1, this one will start at 4. So that's how the intercepts go. And Point, the point 0.7 governs how that uh, that slope changes, right? So from the intercept and the slope, we don't, apart from the, the, or the intercept, well, we can easily guess, but what if these two processes didn't have intercepts or what if they had the same intercept? Well, we need to sort of dig in deeper, right? So how do we tell these apart? As I alluded to late, uh, earlier, we use the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function. So if you look clearly here, okay, you see the ACF of an AR1 and the ACF of an MA1. And clearly there's something, there's a stark difference that we can see. If we look at the ACF of, of an AR1, right, looking at this ACF, right, CF, okay, has, okay, what we see as gradual decay, right? So look at this, it's sort of gradually decaying as time goes on, okay? But if we look at the ACF of an MA1, of a moving average process, it's an immediate drop-off, okay? And note, it's an immediate drop-off at that lag. So if it's an MA1, we see that immediate drop off immediately after lag one, okay? So we refer to the, the, uh, the gradual uh, decrease as a geometric decay, right, by formal terms. And this one is cut off after the lag order. So that's how we sort of at least visually identify an AR from an MA using the ACF, okay? But uh, there's more, right? We can look at the PACF also. So that's the partial autocorrelation function. And what we see here is in an MA1, we see the geometric decay, while in the AR1, it's the immediate cutoff. So it's sort of like the reverse story, right? So you see a cutoff after the lag for an AR and geometric decay for the MA, right? So you see the stark differences as you go from PACF and ACF. So to summarize our identification via the ACF and the PACF, for an AR1, we see an immediate geometric decay uh, and a cutoff after lag one with a PACF. For an ARP, it's geometric decay for the ACF and a cutoff after lag P, right? And the MA would be exactly the opposite, right? So that's how we distinguish the two. What's surprising is if we combine the two in what we call an ARMA process, autoregressive moving average, when you have to specify both the moving average and the autoregressive lags, we see a geometric decay for both. 
Okay, so that's it for this video uh, on the identification through visual inspection. In the next video, we're going to go through more formal identification and sort of separating these two processes together. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.